Anyway, let's fucking dive into the actual truth behind the Save the Kids crypto scam. Okay. Hello, guys and gals. Me, Mudahar, and it's been just over a week. Mudahar went in and apparently tracked every fucking, uh, every like crypto wallet he could find involved in the cryptocurrency scandal that revolves around Save the Kids. I'm very interested to figure out his findings. So let's take a look. Week since a video we made blew up talking about the Save the Kids scam. Since then, me, me and CoffeeZilla have been sitting together at least two nights ago, uh, where we sat down for seven hours going through transaction to transaction. For the record, CoffeeZilla is now under threat. Uh, CoffeeZilla received a uh, cease and desist order from Phase K, or I guess Fraser K. He's no longer associated with Phase. Uh, which is fine. I mean, a cease and desist is hardly like uh, hardly like a super serious legal threat. It's just usually used to threaten people uh, and and back out. And if you if there are no genuine legal concerns there, there's no like defamation or anything like that. If there's no real defamation that you can uh, go on as uh, as best as you can. So in any case, I think this will improve Coffeezilla's situation. And also, ironically, create a Streisand effect where, uh, where more people are going to pay attention to the, uh, the, the crypto scam. Let's keep going. Now, when I made that video, we basically covered the entirety, uh, at least at the time, of Save the Kids, a charity token all about saving the kids that was pumped and dumped to no end. Now, since then, a lot has actually happened, and this video is going to be long, and it's going to be full of a lot of things, but I want to cover every base as much as I can. This won't actually even be the last video. We are actually looking into a further audit, and we're getting full interviews with people who are just now starting to come out in troves to me and Coffeezilla, and everyone else who's looking into this. So it's a big story, but this is going to be a long video. Sit down, relax, grab a beer, because we're going to dive in even further into Save the Kids. Part dose. Now, since then, FaZe Clan itself ended up putting out a statement where they said, we have made the decision to remove K from FaZe Clan and have suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico until further notice. So one expulsion and, a, and the rest of them suspensions. FaZe Clan has absolutely no involvement with our members' activity in the cryptocurrency space. We strongly condemn their recent behavior. The trust and respect of our fans has been and will always be our number one priority. Now, this announcement is the one thing that threw the oil into the fire, so to speak. You know what I mean? It really blew things up beyond a point that nobody could not cover it. You had news sites covering it, Twitch streamers, YouTubers, everyone in the space was looking at Face Clan with eyes open. And honestly, it's not like they could have dug their head into the sand and pretended nothing fucking happened. Because the evidence that we looked at last time was already pretty damning. Coffee's second video was already damning when he dug up the actual address addresses based on the giveaways trace them back to the original account holders which are believed to belong to these members in question some of them at least so again to reiterate if you go to the winner's wallet which you can look up on bsc scan you will find safe galaxy tokens now again you have to see around the time of the giveaway in this case it's two days after look at the address that sent that safe galaxy coin now you can go to that address which is ox 5 af 8 d 67 b 22 and you can see in their entire transaction list or token transfers they not only have saved the kids from the uh from the actual deployer address ox 401 but you can even go further beyond and actually find the uh safe galaxy token so they own safe galaxy in fact clicking that right there you can see the safe galaxy where they earned, uh, got from the deployer and they started sending around to numerous addresses and you can see it more strongly in this giveaway too where you can see that the safe galaxy deployer around the 5th of may and then you can see just a day after you can start seeing multiple accounts being sent safe galaxy token 
Now to understand, a statement like this has to be made because what effectively happened was actually pretty illegal. I know a lot of people have told everyone and there's this weird belief that people think that promoting cryptocurrency isn't really illegal. It's not regulated by the SEC. And to an extent, there are regulation issues regarding cryptocurrencies right now because they're super new. But at the end of the day, what we saw here was very, very, very illegal, okay? Because effectively what happened with Save the Kids token or really any other token that gets Gets pumped and dumped is effectively what happened to John McAfee. If you don't know, John McAfee is a late computer cybersecurity CEO who was actually found dead in a Spanish prison cell uh, with suicide as the cause of death. All right, it's I'm just gonna go with what officially is out there. Oh come on, dude! Don't even like, don't even, dude! Come on, it's just like it literally. No one cares enough about John McAfee to fucking murder him. Okay. That's my statement on it. And I'm a big Epstein boy. Like, I fucking am a huge Epstein truther, okay? But this notion that, like, John McAfee was, was murdered is definitely one that is, is completely silly, dude. I don't believe that for a moment. Now, at this point, he was basically granted an extradition order to the United States, okay? Basically, he was going to be sent back for a litany of crimes that he was being charged with. Now, some of those crimes, all right, included unpaid tax disputes. I believe that's actually one of the reasons he was actually being extradited. But in a lot of ways, he had a bunch of other complaints. Now, this one came straight from the DOJ. So in this entire document, this indictment over here, the summary of the fraudulent schemes, okay? So 19A, the scalping schemes. Let's read this real quick. The first scheme involved a fraudulent practice called scalping, which is sometimes referred to as a pump and dump scheme. In this scalping scheme, McAfee and other McAfee team members, including CC1, brought large quantities of publicly traded cryptocurrency altcoins, which qualified as commodities or securities at inexpensive market prices. Published false and misleading tweets via the official McAfee Twitter account recommending those altcoins for investments to members of the investing public in order to artificially inflate or pump up their market prices and then sold or dumped their investment positions in those altcoins into the short-term market interest stimulated by McAfee's deceptive tweets. Through the scalping scheme, McAfee and other McAfee team members, including CC1, collectively earned more than $2 million in illicit profits while the long-term value of the recommended altcoins purchased by the investors declined substantially as of a year after the promotional tweets. Now, reading that complaint, it's honestly very hard for me not to find the similarities. Like, if you were to take all instances of McAfee team and McAfee in that statement and replace it with Save the Kids token and the various people that have associated themselves with this token, it's very hard to not find or look at this situation and find a lot of similarities, okay? Again, I am not a lawyer, and if there's anybody better to legally explain this, absolutely feel free. But it looks like the similarities are quite glaring. Now, ever since then, me, CoffeeZilla, Barely Sociable, Nerd City have been investigating and our own for all of the aspects regarding Save the Kids token. And while we've all had our own month-long observations into this charity token, literally looking at it from life to this point, uh, in less than a week, in less than a day after I uploaded my initial video, the Reddit community, Save the Kids BSC, suddenly went private. The actual website uh. has all but gone. Even even from Google search results oh, brother. last time I checked. But luckily, I do coincidentally have video of it. And while it's interesting, the website disappearing, even some of the video material, hell, before it went down, a lot of the influencers magically disappeared. A lot of their endorsements, their tweets, even the initial landing page video that you could watch has all but gone. One aspect that I did- Dude, this is how you show the rest of the world that you're not scamming, okay? One good thing you should always do is try to sloppily cover your tracks in the immediate afterwards, uh, in the immediate aftermath of a pump and dump scheme being exposed in broad daylight. This is called the, uh, the sloppiest way of trying to look less guilty technique, okay? Incredible. Didn't cover, and I really fucking wish I did, was when Save the Kids... Like, at this, at this circumstance, at this juncture, there is one thing you can do, okay? To be like, oh, it's not a pump and dump. Like, we're a legitimate fucking token. This is legitimate. Like, we had honest intentions, okay? We weren't running a fucking charity scam simultaneously with a rug pull. 
which is like doubly uh, illegal and, and mega shitty. You can always feign ignorance and be like, oh, I don't know why they did that. That's fucking crazy. I can't believe they did that. Uh, man, that's really fucked up. We just had no idea that people were going to sell it. That's, that's crazy. We were just doing that, except they didn't do that, which is really dumb. Share when Save the Kids Tokens website came out, I actually Googled Save the Kids, and I also came across another legitimate charity, Save the Children, an international NGO that's actually based out of the United Kingdom. One thing I want you to look at between these two websites is look at the layouts of the page. This could literally be chalked up to, again, them using a similar web layout anyways, but look at the similarities in the logos, oh the my color God. scheme. Look, I'm not a trademark. Oh my fucking God. Oh, Jesus. Bro, this is jail. Okay, if you're just operating a regular pump and dump it, with, 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 uh, within the crypto circle, like, you have at least some kind of, uh, it's not necessarily legal protection, but the SEC doesn't look closely at uh, these sorts of transactions. It's not something that, I mean, fucking good luck getting them to actually investigate financial criminals, but like, this is not an area that they are uh, uh, placing a lot of focus on. But this then turns into a separate uh, crime, a separate federal crime, which is charity fraud. Let's keep going. This is a uh, copyright expert or a lawyer. Okay. I feel like I've done enough YouTube to know my way around copyright, but I have to imagine the actual charity, the international NGO wouldn't feel too happy knowing that they could potentially be mistaken at first glance with this controversial charity token. Okay. It almost felt like when this website was created, there was some level of intentions to sort of piggyback off of an actual website. I have talked to people literally investigating this that have confused either website between each other. So again, I have to say for the record, I have to say in my opinion, it feels really shady that that had to be a thing. Now, even looking further into the website again, let's go over a couple points. Okay. A charity token, which of its own admission has a 3% transaction tax, which is then divided into 1% locked liquidity, 1% back to the holders, and then 1% back to charity. You know, doing the goddamn math in the situation to probably Wait, tell you that this coin that was supposed to be the saintly endeavor wasn't exactly designed to be as charitable as it really could be. The website's gone, and the last time we looked into it, the value on the token itself has pretty much plummeted to just over 90% from where it initially was. It hasn't recovered. Save the kids is gone, okay? Those kids are all but missing, okay? They're over. Now, in the last video I sat down and broke a scheme where some of the top wallet addresses were holding the save the kids token. They received it from deployer addresses. They had it ready to go. The day of the fifth and sixth when the promotional tweets were going out and the value of the coin was skyrocketing because while these people were hyping up a coin, people were putting in $100, $50, $20, whatever investment that they could to swing the value of the token upwards just by having the volume. Now by magnifying that scale again, by if one person puts in $100, not going to be that big of a deal. But let's say you have a thousand people putting in $100 each, that's really going to matter, okay? That's going to fluff that speculative value of that coin to its highest zenith. And then the various holders of that token who held massive volumes just basically dumped their coins onto the market. And because there was a code change, the whale code, the anti-whaling code, which prevented, which would have prevented all these account holders from dumping coins you know, it would limit their transactions to once every 24 hours. What I don't understand is why people thought genuinely that they could get away with it. Like, it's kind of the worst way to do this crime, at least with like Dink coin, Doink coin, whatever the fuck. Like, at least with a lot of these other pump and dumps, like, they didn't also include like a charity component to it. Like, it almost feels like these dudes were just like, I really want to get caught. Like, I, my fetish is, at this point, getting investigated by federal agents. Okay? So that's why I'm just going to do it even more illegal. Just literally, just literally sell drugs instead. Okay? Obviously, parody. I don't mean that. Uh, I, I'm saying that sarcastically. But just be like, we're selling drugs with crypto. If you really want to get fucking obliterated by uh, some, some authorities, just like openly state that you are going to be selling drugs with cryptocurrency. 
was magically changed a day before, okay? So, like, just before the coin went live, they got rid of the anti-whaling code, and the people who had the massive amount, the pre-sale tokens, were just dumping that onto the market, killing the coin in progress. There wasn't gonna be any saving the kids, okay? The kids were never gonna be saved. Just put that through your heads. Now, since the release of my last video, Rice Gum, of all people, all right, which is one of the people that I pointed out, actually singled in my title, was one of the key influencers brought onto the Save the Kids operation said this during a live stream, okay? Let's roll that one. All right, look, we've made the decision to remove... Ke hey, yo! No but, no, but that's what I'm saying, though. No, no, look, and so he has suspended Jarvis, Nikon, and Tico because, um, you know... Phase, yo, K, yo, K, yo, me and I told you guys, bro, me, me and K are hella close. Like me, like me and K are hella close. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all talking about scamming and da da da. Like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all, y'all, need to tap in, type shit. Tap in, bro. Yo, if y'all trying to scam, hit my line, bro. If y'all, yo, if y'all trying to scam, hit my line. Y'all need to tap in with me. Again, I don't know if he's trying to be, like, hilarious right now by saying all this shit, but, like, when he's saying, hey, I'm close to Fraser, uh, or say in this case, if you're trying to scam, hit my line, it almost really sounds like he's trying to throw out some weird accusation. I'm not gonna put words in his mouth. I'm just saying, from first glance, it's kind To be fair, he was, uh, I think he was actually, uh, memeing. I-, I Doesn't he clarify it after? Oh, God, I need to fucking bring chat back up again. Listen, motherfuckers, you're going to behave, right? You're going to behave, right? If you don't behave, I will literally never, ever fucking turn it on for the rest of the day. I'm actually enjoying the peace of mind that I currently have from not having dipshits yell at me all the goddamn time. So don't make me, don't make me fucking clap you again, because I will. Like that, that dude who was like, that dude who was like, dude, what the fuck? Like, you're yelling at chat. Uh, uh, y you know, this is like so many fucking little moments that you've had so far. Like that, that actually was like, yeah, you're right. Why am I putting myself through this? I love chat. Obviously I love, uh, streaming with the chat there, but. One guy equals chat. No chat was like fucking freaking out over dumb shit. And it was making me angry. So, Cash App gifted 69 subs. Thank you, Cash App, for the 69 subs. Kind of weird when he said that. Also, when you're involved in this kind of a token, you know, when you're involved in this controversy, it's probably not advisable to say that if you're trying to scam, hit up my line. I'm sure a judge wouldn't laugh at that. Like, I know that Rice has a history of trolling. I'm going to give you full disclosure. But, like, at the same time, bro, there's times for, you know, joking, and there's times to be serious. Right now, I wouldn't be making jokes like that, okay? I'm just putting it out there to save the children is a charity that was working with a thing before he became a cultist scammer wait really what? that said though i'm going to move on from here and focus on the next person now, the next target in this entire situation is a guy known as FaZe Nikon, okay? Nikon, whatever we're gonna go with. Now, Nikon did actually get back to me. I'm gonna just state for the record, I did try my best to communicate with some of these people. A lot of them didn't respond back. Some of them I couldn't communicate with. But to give Nikon the credit where he is, as lawyered up as he is, he did actually get back to me. So I'm just gonna mention that for the record. Anyways, looking at Nikon's wallet in this situation, all right, let's go look at what this guy did with Save the Kids again. Now, this wallet address, OXD1ABCA, is one that I'm linking to him because it's based on actual BNB transactions. So again, let's look at the blockchain, okay? It doesn't lie. Now, in the blockchain, one of the actual BNB transactions that actually happened, which was substantial, is one that I'm going to put out right here, OX7167DFF885. Now, this wallet address, I want you to remember for a little bit. He yeah. sent... Yeah, I'm definitely going to remember OX7167DFF885. 20 BNB twice within an hour period, okay? To understand how much 20 BNB is, let's look at the price on the transaction. So we're going to open the transaction details, and we're we're going to check the value at the time of transaction. So it was around $8,000 that was sent. Now $8,000, and you can multiply that again, so $16,000 was sent to OX7167. Now this wallet, and this is a 
Excel spreadsheet that we were sent, which is alleged to be the Sam Pepper whitelist wallet, okay? This is something that was sent to us. And the reason why I can sort of get behind its legitimacy is that this will play a very key role in establishing uh, the, 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 the save the kits scam in general. So let's look at the top here. This is send BNB. So you see how that wallet address OX7167 DFF885 matches to what was sent. This is a presale amount that these individuals would send to that wallet that would basically allow them to then get the presale wallet tokens from the deployer address for save the kids. So now let's go back to Nikon's wallet, the BEP20 token transactions. So Nikon here received from the deployer address, and I'm going to change the age to match the times here. So 0605. He received 2.5 million tokens, okay? Now he sold a chunk of tokens, but he still has 1.8 million sitting in his kids token wallet all right there are a couple things how are you lost he's talking about like okay he's talking about the uh the the transactions that were taking place nice uh have fun with that 13 month subscriber ban by the way that's a perma suck my cock um what he is what he is talking about here is sam pepper's a crypto wallet and the activities that he is tracing from Sam Pepper's crypto wallet because he is Scam Pepper is one of the main people that uh, scammed everybody. Things to point out, however, and we're going to look at them right now. Now, one thing I also want you guys to really look at in the transaction list, and I'm going to put this wallet address that you're going to keep in the back of your mind right now. This is OX02259. I want you to remember that string of characters because it's going to play a key role later on in this video. Now, he sent that account 8 BNB, which at the time of transaction was around $4,500. Why would Nikon's wallet be sending, on 0516, Nikon's alleged wallet be sending to this account that sum of money? Now, I've been using the term alleged wallet a lot in this video, and I'm just trying to cover legal basis. But if you look at just this transaction list, the founder wallet sent 2.5 million tokens, but this account didn't sell all of it. They they basically cashed out, from what it seems like, their initial investments. So remember Remember when they sent those 20 BNB to that pre-sale wallet OX716? They basically got the amount of token, they sold their initial investment, but if they're still holding on to tokens that have lost over like 85% of their value, it's kind of safe to say that this wallet holder did lose their money, okay? Like they, it, it, regardless to say, it isn't as bad as any other operator in this entire situation, okay? This, is, this isn't as egregiously terrible. It's bad that the participation happened, but they're still holding on to a good chunk of their token. I think it's about two. I don't understand why the fuck anyone would continue to engage in the holding. This is the other part of it that I don't understand about scams like this, where it's like, if you're already, if you are, if you are already dumping, then why do you hold? I guess maybe because you want like some kind of, of, legal protection to try to be able to justify that uh you did not want uh, to dump after the pump thirds in fact, the only guy in this entire scenario, Tico, who basically went by unscathed because neither me or Steven could really find his wallet addresses. And trust me, we tried. We actually ended up going to Keemstar and he reached out to Tico because Keemstar is involved with the phase guys pretty heavily. He ended up getting this confirmation from Tico. I never sold a single coin or made a single dollar off this. Legit have not sold any of it. Not even my own investment to put in. I None. need your wallet to clear you. Zero. And he said, I need your wallet to clear you. And then he gave his wallet address, okay? So at this point, we're gonna audit Phase Tico and we're gonna try to isolate this guy from this situation Wait. because he is actually fairly innocent. He might be the- To be fair, Phase Tico out of all of those Phase Clan guys is the one fucking person that I follow. I don't even know why, but I always, I don't know. I always thought he was like, he seems like a nice dude. I don't know if he's innocent or not in this situation, but- the only motherfucker who wanted to save the goddamn kids. So not only did he get the money from the deployer address, he didn't dump a single 
token of kids. And then he also bought more kids with his own money. And at least that shows that he believed in this charity token idea. The fact that this is the one account that we have found that received money from the deployer address and didn't dump a- Bro, imagine- Imagine not even dumping your fucking initial, like, money that you put in. Like, that's crazy, dude. I mean, that's actually kind of dumb. He cashed out his initial USD and still has millions of it. If I, if it didn't get killed in the pump and dump and took off, he would have been safe to take out more. It looks pretty guilty and premeditated that he skimmed off the initial. No, he didn't do that. Single token shows that Tico is one of the most innocent people in this and should actually be let back into FaZe Clan. Now let's move on to the- Yeah, they just like, either they just baited him and they used him as a fall guy. Like either case, no matter what, like, it seems like he didn't do anything bad, dude. The actual big meat and potatoes of the entire situation, okay? This is a new development. Now, this is something that I was waiting for. Dude, I wonder if he got fucking scammed too. Like, like, bro, I thought we were saving fucking kids, dude. What the fuck? Ah! Ah, shit. Thought I fucking clapped that fly. I did not. Motherfucker even bought more, dude. He's like, yeah, I really want to save the kids. Like, I think this is a great fucking charity. For I had to wait for this video before I could make this one, okay? So here's a uh, Frazier actually responding. The truth about save the kids! I actually don't want to just watch this video by myself. So I'm going to call up my good friend, Coffeezilla, and we're going to sit down and react to this bumbling shit pile together, okay? So let's go right to that. All right, dude, let's watch oh, this video. This I, all right. I've only seen this one time. I could... It made me so upset, but I've, I've gotta watch I've it. I've seen you. this a million times. Let's do it. One minute fifty eight seconds. Wow. Norm pre watched. Muda pre watched, dude. This fucking bullshit is not the same, dude. It's not the fucking same, dude. Ugh. Imagine pre watching videos, dude. Just kidding. I also fucking pre watched the video that they're about to watch because uh, I watched it on stream. Normally, audience, okay. we don't. I don't watch these things in full. I'll cut them up. I probably will do that, but it's not that long of a clip. Let's see what this apology is all about. I know I haven't posted in a while, and there is so much it. that I want to say about what's happened in I the- I fucking got it! Fuck you, Fly! You are no match for my intellectual prowess and quick hands! Wah -wah! Fuck yeah, dude. I just fucked that Fly up, bitch. Whew, it feels so rewarding always just when you fucking murder a goddamn Fly, dude. I don't know why. I just- I hate them. All right, let's keep going. Oh, bro, let's fucking go. Legal reasons. All I'm allowed to say right now is this: <laughs> Please, please, do not believe what you're hearing online. All of these people making videos think. Don't believe your lying eyes. Think that they know the truth and that they know who's responsible when they just don't. Okay. All right. Pause the twenty Stop seconds. It. Stop it. Ah! Oh, dude. Okay, listen, I could probably understand this for a million things, you know what I mean? I could probably understand, like, hey, if we were running off speculations, like if we were some stupid T channel. However, we looked at the blockchain. You can't hide it. You used a technology blockchain that- doesn't lie. You used a technology that literally trans- it keeps a log down to the second. I guess, like, if I were to become, like, a crypto, uh, rug pull Andy, the one thing I would do is never, ever allow a single way for my crypto wallet and not even any of my, like, alt wallets to ever come out. Because then it, you automatically, you're, you're super traceable. Like, the moment that someone can figure out what your wallet is because you, like, actually gave money to someone from a sweepstakes type situation, it's a wrap. Like, now they know at least one of your fucking wallets. I know that people use multiple wallets, but that dude, while using multiple wallets, still got caught because one of the fucking wallets that he was using got clapped when he was doing a sweepstakes. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you say you can't trust it? Come on. You bet, you backtraced the wallet through a giveaway, all right, which by the way, audience, there's a massive story on that. Just stay tuned. So this is the truth, all right? I lost money 
on Save the Kids token. Now, because I believe in fair and objective reporting, completely free from personal attachment, I'm going to give Fraser the complete pass here. What he said is actually true. If you please go- Please name me some well-known people that banks refuse to service with a bank account. Don't name Nazis, please. Thank you. Wait, what is this? Crypto when done right can help people that banks refuse or unable to. There's some great things behind it, but always bad actors. You should read the white paper, five minute reads. Explains that crypto can be beneficial. No, uh, the people that are uh, refuse service with bank accounts are sex workers. That person means sex workers. Crypto could help people with sex, people who do sex work and like weed and shit. But that's pretty much it. Go back to when we looked at Nikon's wallet with the 20 BNB transaction to OX716, which is the pre-sale wallet for Save the Kids, Fraser did give his own money to this wallet. And given on the dump and the dates lining up in the blockchain, it does in fact look like he didn't make any money regarding it, okay? In fact, I'm, I, I have to take him on his word, it does sound like he did lose money. So again, to be fair and objective, I am going to believe Fraser here regarding that state. And for full transparency, I didn't calculate every single dollar out of all of these save the kids sales so maybe if he did go above the initial investment just by a bit i certainly don't think it's substantial enough to even warrant the political fallout he's had in the entire community because of this save the kids token but what actually upsets me the most is that anybody else was hurt so we've uncovered significant evidence which confirms that a dishonest person- Pause it, pause it, pause it, pause it. Okay. Yeah. So post-editor notice, me and Steven decided to cut some sections out of this reaction like this one for legal reasons. Um, just because we really agree that speculation isn't the thing that we're going with, we're going to try to keep that as out of this story as possible, and we're going to look at things from a factual point of view. So we're going to really look at the blockchain for the most part, and when it comes to our personal speculation, we're removing it from these videos, okay? used his trust with me to scam everybody. This person gained my trust and the trust of my friends while still encouraging us to be the public faces of his scheme. He then abused that trust to go and alter the code right before launch, resulting in six figure profits for him and then leaving the rest of us to be blamed this is such a stupid argument right he's like this person all right whoever this person may be for the record i'm not before we get to that part i just want to say that the current cease and desist that fraser k sent to coffee zilla the one the dude on the left is so funny where he got a fucking lawyer to basically write a cease and desist and unironically put, the comparison, uh, the joking comparison that CoffeeZilla made in his original video, the joking comparison CoffeeZilla made in his original video, to set, where he said, Phase K, more like Phase Rug, am I right, was stated as defamation to the tune of millions of dollars in lost revenue. Okay? Which also unironically it feels kind of like a diss towards phase rug like if i was phase rug i'd be like fuck you dude what do you mean you should be excited to be compared to me okay shyness is a fucking superpower that is what i call a callback by the way for the record and yes phase rug is chill he convinced my friends and I to be the public facing scheme of this and then change the code, which the blockchain doesn't lie. It's his alleged wallet that we traced back that does a crap ton of transactions per minute, taking advantage of the anti whale code change. What? How do you do? How do you diffuse that? Those who are dealing with this manipulation and working with authorities to make sure he pays for what he's done. And I want to help as much as I can. And right now, the most powerful thing I have right now is my connection to you guys. You will never. <laughs> nah, he doesn't even cry. We watched this already. Remember when I did a comparison, like a side-by-side -side comparison with like him and his apology video versus his brother when he got banned from fucking playing Fortnite because he cheated uh, on a private server and like showed how to do a hack. The showing how to do a hack part of the video was really bad. But the fact that like he got ban perma ban from fortnite now that i think about it is like kind of rough dude anyway you know how much i appreciate all of your support and one way i can pay that forward is Happy by birthday. making sure that this con man HTX gets the justice that he deserves pause it pause it <laughs> <laughs> he's playing the hero Ooh. and the victim at the same time 
He's going, I was victimized. <laughs> and he goes, I'm going to be the one to investigate this. We're conducting a very thorough, independent, and aggressive investigation to find out exactly what happened and when. And to do that most effectively, I need your help. If you lost any money on Save the Kids Token, please tell us your story on this email below so we can share it with our investigators. It's like, if you lost any money, did you see how hard the graph tanked, bro? <laughs> I think it suffice to say most people lost their money. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I honestly want to send, Fra I, I want to send Fraser an email. I lost money with Save the Kids. Again, further to keep the video objective, we're just cutting any form of unnecessary speculation out and also to protect things legally. Let's move on. We want to provide the authority with all the evidence they need to take the proper action and with your help we can hold him accountable and make sure he's never able to do this sort of thing again it's like it's so hilarious again i have to keep stating this in the video if they just oh no oh no jack she's 97 thank you for the 10 fucking gifties bruv title this save the kids coin if they just called it come in my asshole coin or something like that immediately would have gotten away i wouldn't have looked at it i don't think you would have looked at no. it i think we would have no, joked dude. about it 100 percent. all right well it's gonna get worse thanks for having me on man yeah no problem man take care <laughs> see it so you can probably understand that i really fucking hate it when this kind of a person ends up saying don't believe these youtubers they don't know the truth no i'm gonna sit down over here and i'm gonna take you down a rabbit hole to show you a new level of scumbaggery so let's sit down okay now giveaway is where you give away money to usually you know random people especially your fans right a lot of people do them ladies and gentlemen let's look at phase k's giveaways okay okay so at this point me and coffee decide let's go look at some giveaways maybe we can find a discrepancy and to say the least what we found is pretty alarming so to understand, let's go back to how we found this wallet that's alleged to belong to Fraser. So basically, we looked at Fraser's Twitter history before the tweets got deleted, and we found a giveaway for Safe Galaxy, where Fraser was giving away Fit Safe Galaxy tokens. Someone on Twitter joined that giveaway, and they gave their own personal wallet address. Now, Fraser said this person won, and now at this point, we took that winner's wallet address, punched it into the blockchain, and basically rounded up the dates, you this know, matched the them up, video. and found a safe galaxy transaction so then we looked at the wallet that sent this winner the safe galaxy which again if this is a giveaway that wallet should technically belong to fraser so this ox5 af wallet we clicked on and we looked at all of its history so one of the things it was involved in was the pre-sale to save the kids token and also the various other giveaways that we're going to mention going on forward the giveaways in this question that fraser has done is uh, eclipse token safe galaxy and tits coin all of these tweets are right here so what we're effectively doing here is we're going to take these tweets we're going to look at the dates as much as we can and we're going to look at the blockchain address for these o zero x five af or what we believe to be fraser's alleged wallet we're going to line up a transaction of tits coin safe galaxy or eclipse where it's applicable and we're going to see what accounts it's sending to because the idea is if this wallet receives a bunch of the giveaway coin the next transactions on that same day will most definitely be to the actual winners. It's it's very likely that's how the story pans out, okay? That's how a giveaway is at least, in my opinion, believed to work. Okay, so what you're about to witness right now is some serious fucking, like, brain damage in the making, okay? Are you guys ready for this shit? All right, so what we did over here was, we, was basically, we looked at this one Eclipse giveaway, right? Which I still don't understand how the fuck the, the tax man uh, works on this. Like, doesn't the tax man ultimately cometh for shit like this? Like, how are they avoiding taxes? Withdrawals? I mean, you have to convert to, like, the U.S. dollar eventually if you want to use it. Right? I guess that's when it gets fucked. You can roll it. You need to report it. If you don't, they eventually will find you and kill you in Spain. Okay, shut up. You just claim the withdrawals as capital gains? Effectively, he got it from the deployer account from Eclipse, and then he started giving these out. So 8.7 billion, 8.7 billion, 8.7 billion, right? So we know that this giveaway happened. Now, what we did was we took the, all these addresses that won the giveaway, and we decided, wait a minute, are they lucky enough to win another fucking giveaway from Fraser? 
Uh, usually the odds of that happening are pretty fucking nil, but you know, at no. least in Minecraft. No. Oh, no, dude. Come on, dude. Literally every part of this is, it's like maniacal, dude. This is the sloppiest fucking way to steal. Oh my fucking God, dude. Are you... Oh my God. Why are they doing this? Just sell merchandise. Just fucking sell merchandise. At least there's something physical, tangible that you can like sell to your fucking fans. You don't have to fuck them. Bro, this is crazy. They're literally like... I don't even want to give a single fucking dime to the fans. This level of, this is just like evil at this point. It's not just dumb. So it's wrong to be lucky? Okay, dude, nice take. <laughs> Good one, dude. Craft community, we've seen that odds, well, as slim as they are, sometimes they can come true, right? Let's go check some of these odds out, okay? Uh, let's go find one random wallet, okay? Let's go find one wallet that we found in this situation, okay? So one of the winners here was, uh, let's go see OX, I think it's OX78, all right? Yeah, OX78E, won 8.7 billion token, right? Now, basically, you can do the exact same thing. So let's say we wanna check it against any token blockchain. You're gonna type in Safe Galaxy BSC scan, and you're gonna hit the Safe Galaxy token tracker bsc scan now this is going to give you the token for the bsc scan and over here you can press this little button and you can enter that address in so all we have to do is copy the oh uh, what is it ox78 so let's uh let's just copy that address so the ox 7080 we're going to copy that to the clipboard we're going to go to safe galaxy and we're just going to hammer that in into the search okay we're going to do the same thing for tits coin right here we're going to go into the wallet we're going to just jam that in there and we're going to check everything, okay? We're going to do the same thing for Save the Kids as well because fuck the irony of like cryptocurrency. Like the benefits of cryptocurrency can also simultaneously be the negative. Like the biggest, it, it can either be a, your hero, your saving grace, or the villain that destroys you. Like the moment that someone fucking figures out your wallet like your wallet number you're you're so yeah it, it can either be its angle or its devil you know what i mean i said that on purpose like the moment someone fucking claps what your crypto wallet looks like or whatever you like one of your alternative wallets are it turns into it it just from that point on you're just tracing all matter as long as you're as long as you're like interested enough and you're a, a freak like you're you're freak enough you could just like literally find everything it's crazy fuck it why not let's see if we can get double let's see if we can get killing sprees across the fucking board so now we know that we know in this eclipse token, Fraser gave the eclipse token. Okay. So this is an eclipse token check. He gave it to OX78E. OX78E did whatever the shenanigans they wanted. Is OX78E lucky enough to win safe galaxy giveaway? Now, if you look at the time here, I'm going to show you that was- Bro, these motherfuckers have done more work than the IRS, dude. Than the SEC. They are literally, I said this in the last video, but like this dude and CoffeeZilla got together and basically- Hide a nice little fucking bow around the gift basket and you just handed it off. Like the authorities could just literally trace exactly what these people have, have seen so far. Open and shut case, you know what I mean? Pats on the back overall. All it takes is like one fucking one SEC dude to be like, okay, I'm just I'm I wanna fucking I personally wanna get uh, uh, a promotion. So I, I will just do that. 
was 76 days ago, okay? Again, let's look at the safe galaxy. So that was 67 days ago, all right? So if you look at it, 0506. So that was, you can, you can correlate that with some of these tweets that are made. So I'm gonna show you again with the safe galaxy giveaway, right? Here's a safe galaxy, right? This is the craziest thing I've ever done. I'm gonna double your safe galaxy wallet, right? May 5th, all right? What's that time there, kiddos? May fucking 6th. Okay, so maybe it's a little day off, but it's still in May. It's around that time, okay? Is uh, is 7080 lucky enough to win? Of course he is. OX5 AF 8D67B22. Fraser's wallet sends that safe galaxy. Literally doubles the amount, which then gets dumped, dude. A minute, like literally no time after. But now is this a... Okay, listen. Winning one giveaway, lucky enough. You can win two giveaways. Can he win the tits coin too? Of course he fucking can. OX5AF8D67B22. Guys, they also want, they want all three. Bro, this is vicious, dude. It, this feels like, this feels like it was done, like, with, out of a place of spite and anger for, like, the common fan. Why in the ever-loving fuck would you unironically get to this level of fraud it's like petty it's pathological just give like a crumb of money to some fans bro it's so easy what the fuck like it's like a it's fucked on a logarithmic scale okay it's like every single new window that opens is like just immediately expanding into more fucked situations, okay? I'm Turkish, okay? Logaritma. Assholes. Don't make fun of me. English is my second language. Doubling, tripling, quadrupling down on the fuck fuckness. Like, it's just like, I'm not even going to give you a fucking penny, dude. Okay, I am going to literally circulate the funds in between my own wallets, allegedly. My own fucking wallets to get you invested and get you excited. Giveaways and immediately dumped. But now, did they also want to save the kids? Let's go look at this wallet. Dude, they got the founder for save the kids. The founder wallet sent them save the kids token, which were dumped. They only have fucking 6.9 kids left, dude. They've got nothing. I want people to know for tits token, since there's no actual day on the tweet that I could find, just keep the idea of 72 days ago. I want you, I want you to remember that in the giveaway, all right? Uh, that's sort of the timeline I'm going with these blockchains. 72 days ago is kind of that rough point. Anyways, I'm just mentioning all this for full clarity. All right, let's go find it. All right, let's see. Maybe we can find one more, right? Shit. What is this OXB4? Maybe that 8.7 million? Well, shit, fuck my asshole. Let's see what this dude's all about, huh? So if you open up OXB4, all right, let's go. Let's go copy that address and let's go toss that motherfucker right into the eclipse check, okay? So we're going to go in, we're going to put all this in and we're going to see if this dude's winning. Oh, look at that. So they won the they won the giveaway. We just saw that. They won it from Fraser, right? OX5AF8D67B22. All right. They gave him 8.7 billion token. Immediately pretty much dumps most of it. All right. Are they lucky enough to win Safe Galaxy? You bet your ass they are. 0605. So around the same timeline, May 5th. All right. Look at that. Fraser, OX5AF8D67B22. Won that giveaway as well. Wait a minute. T but did they win tits coin? Let's go check that out. 72 fucking days ago. OX5AF8D67B22. He won all three fucking giveaways. But did they do Save the Kids? Let's check that out, okay? Wait a minute. They got it from the Save the Kids founder. What the fuck is this? <laughs> they got the token. They sold it. They got no kids. Kids. Can we find another one? I bet your asshole we can. Look at that. OX49. That one, 10.4 billion. All right, let's go see what this token's all about. Let's go capture this dude's address and let's check what Eclipse tokens this motherfucker was getting. Wait, okay, so they won the giveaway, right, from Fraser, all right, around 75 days ago, right? You know, they got that, they got that, they got that good old Eclipse token right here, Eclipse. They got that, dumped it out, all right? But wait, did they win Save Galaxy? 
Wait a minute. Oh my god. It's like they fucking won Safe Galaxy as well. OX5AF 8D67B22. What a fucking coinky. These guys just, uh, hey, I, I don't understand. Like, these things happen. Okay. It's called one quintillion, uh, one in one quintillion luck. Uh, okay. I don't know. Have you heard of a. Heard of a Minecraft speedrunner by the name of Dream, sir? They won it, dumped it, won it again, dumped it! <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait just a goddamn minute. Did they win tits coin? Wait a minute. They got tits coin right here. OX5. Oh my god, they did! OX5AF8D67B22. They fucking won it and dumped it! Uh, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Aside from dumping, you know, the breast cancer charity token, let's see if they also did the save the kids. And would you look at that? They have the founder's address, dumped it, bought it, dumped it, bought it, dumped it. Okay, kind of day trader-ish, but yo, they were dumping it. They had the pre-sale token, they dumped it. How weird is it that we found three fucking giveaway winners, it seems, that won all three giveaways and participated. Wait a minute. Did this wallet OX49A get any money from the Fraser wallet? Oh wait, easier way. Let's view all incoming transact. Oh my God, it did get money. <laughs> OX5AF8D67B22, 15 BNB. How much was that at the time of tra Wow, this guy won all three giveaways and got $5,308. Oh, fuck my asshole. That's a level of coincidences I didn't fucking believe existed, God. Damn! Now, sometimes winners aren't so fucking lucky, okay? This account over here won the giveaway. OX3A7EB won the Eclipse giveaway. They were not lucky enough to win the Safe Galaxy giveaway. However, Aww. they were also kind of lucky enough to win the Tits Coin giveaway. OX5AF8D67B22 uh, basically received a shit ton of money that then got dumped. However, let's look at their Save the Kids wallet. Wow, they received the they received the deployer wallet? They received the pre-sale token and then dumped it? Man, there's a lot of fucking commonality. You guys want to know something even fucking wilder? So this OX3A17, this giveaway winner, you want to know who else he got money from? OX78E754607070. Why the fuck is that shit so familiar? You want to know why that's so familiar? It's why not, is this okay? For the record, it's literally not. I'm a, the, the, one, the one problem I have with this video, otherwise it's really good, and the fucking work there is insane, and I shouts out to these dudes for fucking putting in the work. But no, the numbers part, they should have just said, like, this is A, this is B. You know what I mean? And just, like, use, like, this is blue. They should have just used uh, 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 code words for it. But also, I just want to say this. There is no such thing as a coincidence. Okay. I just, I, I yeah. Uh, that's basically what this entire video could be rendered down to, you know, here. The fact that you're watching this video means you're energetically aligned with me and this. And the 60 second top of the hour ad break. That's what you're energetically aligned with, bitch. Let's fucking go! Woo! The fact that you're watching that video means an ad break is coming. Okay? Had to do it to him, dude. I had to bring it back. And the lucky winners that will no longer see the ads at the top of the hour are people who subscribe for $5. People who subscribe for free with a Twitch Prime. And people who use ad blockers. And people who use VPNs. But the ad break comes for all, folks. Here it is now. Right, let's message. finish this video. It's really funny. Your thoughts create your reality. But you already knew that. Yet... Yeah. You still live a life that you oh, dread. Excuse me. Ah! That is because when you visualize your dream life, you unconsciously believe that it is unrealistic. account giving money because just go back five minutes this is the same fucking account ox78e that also won all of fraser's fucking giveaways now apparently the giveaway winners have become such good friends they're fucking financing one another ah here take two bn bro they're just you know they're just uh sharing their appreciation for fucking crypto sweepstakes giveaways dude i think this is pure coincidence
Airbnb. How much was that worth at the time? Yeah, just, just take 700 bucks, dude. We're, we're, we're rolling good right now. For, for I don't even know how you could hide these transactions better, but I feel like this is the sloppiest way to do it. I mean, the one thing you should have definitely not done, the one thing you should have definitely not done is very publicly offer a bot account money that exposed what your fucking crypto wallet was to the entire world, or at least one of your crypto wallets. And then two, I don't know, give yourself money in the fucking sweepstakes. What's wrong with you? It's just 10 grand, dude. If you're slated to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, which they weren't even, okay? They were like making 20, 30 grand, which blows my fucking mind because that's literally just like do a merch poll, do a fucking, God damn it, do a fucking, uh, you know, raid Shadow Legends ad, okay? Do a Shadow Legends raid, whatever the fuck it's called. They literally sponsor everyone, okay? They will sponsor anyone and everyone, okay? And they'll give you the money. You don't have to fuck people over that aggressively, but no, that requires you to fucking actually sit there and play that game. This motherfucker was like throwing the entire, he's like risking jail time jail time for this like why are people so desperate dude it makes no sense at that level at that did they sponsor you no i i refuse to take it but at that level like why are you doing this why are you throwing this shit out he did those too oh my god how hungry are you man how fucking hungry are you Rage has been keeping us fucking winning. Now, I really, I really want to hear the response to this. I, I have to imagine it can't be anything. Uh, it can't be anything more. Wait a minute. Wait a goddamn minute. Wait a fucking second. OX three A seventeen is not only a fucking winner, but he also put two fucking BNB into OX seven one six seven DFF eight eight five one EAD. Why is that important? That's mentioned in the Sam Pepper whitelist investigation sheet that I have. That saved the kids presale token. Holy shit. The co dude, the web of intrigue is They literally just like did this. They like open and close the circuit, which is like perhaps the dumbest thing you can do if you're scamming kids with a fake charity doing a fucking rug pull. And like also promoting other altcoins and shitcoins as a as as other rug pulls while doing a sweepstake. Like, why would you reuse the same fucking wallets? Not to like teach you how to launder money in the crypto space better, but this is literally the worst fucking way to do this. Isn't it free to just open up as many crypto walls as you can? Like, it's so lazy. They were just like, yo, these fucking dumbasses will literally buy anything I sell them, okay? You're so fucking dumb. You will buy anything and everything I do. And guess what? There will be no repercussions whatsoever. So I'm basically going to fuck you. And I'm going to fuck you super hard. And I'm going to do it in the sloppiest way possible. And even if it all comes out in the end, it doesn't really matter. Dude, this web is stickier than a fucking incest family. What do you want me to say? There's, listen, I would love for Fraser to refute this. He spent a minute, 59 seconds making a bullshit apology video. When I don't know if he expected that we would have dug this up. If this isn't giveaway fraud, I honestly don't fucking know what is, okay? Me and Coffee sat down for seven hours looking for fucking patterns, okay? We were the ones looking for NSA tier grit patterns patterns on crypto fraud this if this isn't giveaway fraud i have no fucking idea what is okay these accounts that i've shown you won every giveaway most of them they also were invested in save the kids this is the least illegal man in the uk okay that's all i'm gonna say Fraser k is the least fraudulent man in the uk they also received extra money from fraser and now they're sending money back and forth between each other. If this isn't a sticky web of intrigue, I fucking don't know what is. So this list that I was mentioning over here that me and Coffee had gotten, OX7167, the Sam Pepper pre-sale whitelist wallet. 
Changing wallets doesn't actually break the chain of custody. The trail is still easy to trace. This is why coins with transparent ledgers will never take off in the mainstream for use as currency and privacy preserving coins will ultimately reign supreme like Monero has already done on the darknet markets. Stop the anglophobia, I beg. Okay, okay, that was the last one. That was the last one, dude. Dude, this sounds like commie propaganda. They're just trying to make a buck. Let him be. Shut the fuck up. You, this person can't be serious. Oh, yeah. They're fucking memeing. Oh, God. You deserve to be fucked. You really do. Anyone who has this take unironically deserves to be fucked. I, I do not feel bad for them ever again. I, I this like, this is how, what crypto bros have done to me. Okay. I do not. I no longer care about crypto bros getting fucked. They're begging for it. They're literally asking for it. They're like, please fuck me. Please, please, please fuck me. Is what I hear from every, every fucking crypto bro. Please, I want to get fucked. Now, again, the, the source here is pretty much as obscure and anonymous as you want. And to kind of confirm that this isn't really bullshit, at least in our eyes, we ended up looking at every single wallet address and basically, and you can take all these addresses for yourself and you can put them into BSC scan and get a pretty fucking good idea of what's actually going on. So the idea over here that I'm looking at, all right, this is how we came to the conclusion. This is how we came to prove that there's some aura of legitimacy proper even though the source here is anonymous i want to just show you the method to the madness so here i took for instance this is where i was investigating coffee starter from the top i did the bottom so i'm going to show you what i did so this account oxoab828dc2df is one wallet address that i was looking at right so the idea that we did was we took this address we checked did they sell stk so basically were they part of that pre-sale okay did they have those founder tokens i said yes and then we check how fast they sold. So basically, when did they get the money from that pre-sale deployer wallet? And then when did they sell immediately after? In some cases, it was like three hours, okay? So three hours, three hours. There was a pattern that we discovered. We then checked who was funding them. And then we also checked if they had bot-like transactions. So here I'm going to show you what's going on, okay? And you can take all of these addresses and audit them for yourself, just so you can see the correlation on this sheet. I, I'm gonna fully say this was done at like one in the morning. There may be like one mistake, one misinterpretation, but in general, I stand by our investigation on this sheet. So let's take this wallet address and pop it in to save the kids token check. So this wallet address, OXO, that we were just looking at over here, I'm gonna check what's going on, all right? So this guy ended up getting from the deployer address, so OX401, right? They ended up getting this token. Now here I'm gonna show you the time, right? So they basically got it 06052226, all right? Once they had gotten it, they bought more from PancakeSwap, and then literally within an hour, all right? So three hours, so one in the two in the morning almost, they started dumping this shit en masse. Now what's, what I'm classifying as potentially a bot, or it could also just be a group of people sitting on a Telegram or Discord chat coordinating a dump, is basically, look at these transaction timings, right? So within a fucking minute, they did a transaction. And of course, the value is always the same. And roughly, it's like, hey, a few seconds afterwards, you know, 30 seconds, 50 seconds, whatever you want to call it. Now, this could be a bot, you know, let's say in the programming, the bot who is selling these orders could basically just go out and say, okay, listen, sell an order, pick a random time between, pick a random number between 30 and 90. Let's assume 30 and 90 are seconds in the code. So that bot would basically sell erratically, right? Maybe once every 32 seconds, once every 60 seconds, kind of mimicking a human being being. There's also a very good chance that this is a bunch of real people sitting in a real Discord call coordinating these dumps together, right? Now, at the end of the day, all right, regardless of whether it's a computer bot or a Telegram group, it's a very good sign to tell you this dump was premeditated, thought well in advance, saved the kids, was doomed from the fucking start. Now, moving along. Yeah, no shit. I mean, dude, we're 38 minutes in, okay? Yeah, it, fucking yeah. The, the the coordinated bot dumps are are not the the final piece of evidence that should probably show you that. 
alongside from one of the shadiest giveaways that I've ever seen on the platform, it's time to move our sights to what I think is the guy operating a lot of these deals behind the scenes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you this article. It Meet feels like there were no kids being saved. Jordan Galen, one of FaZe Clan's mighty managers. As the industry of pro gaming continues to develop and grow, I'm going to skip a little bit down over here. Galen, a senior talent manager at FaZe Clan, you can look that up on LinkedIn, by the way, one of the most popular esports gaming orgs in the world, took time out of his busy day. Back in 2010, FaZe Clan got started as a YouTube channel called FaZe Sniping. Let's go down even further. Galen would first join FaZe Clan in 2018 as a talent operations manager, assisting the talent manager with their day-to-day -day and special projects for whatever their talent needed very quickly. It became evident that I would be able to better assist the company if I were assisting talent directly instead of the managers. Galen came into the position with plenty of experience, having previously co-founded a digital marketing agency called Limits Group with none other than Tav Cooperman, which is, by the way, Banks's manager. The Tav is also a famous promoter in Los Angeles. The manager of FaZe Banks and Temper. As Galen describes it, Limits Group's main focus was managing talent. So this isn't a small guy by any endeavor, okay? You can actually look up fights of, uh, uh, what is it, uh, fucking Jarvis literally oh, going on not too long ago with him in the actual promotional material for set fight. Old mischief. But why am I mentioning this guy? Why is he in the tar? Because not only does he have severe proximity to all these people, there is something he does beyond talent management. Okay, let's go check it out. So yeah, guys, look, we're super excited to get started. Um, Frazier's ready to kind of start oh, formulating no. and drafting his tweets for tonight. I mean, look, you know, bro, mischief left uh, OTK. This is Miskiv after he fucking clout chases his way into FaZe Clan, okay? Leaving OTK and clout chasing his way into fucking FaZe Clan. That's what would happen to Miskiv if he did that. No, like wait, I wait, told you. Wait, don't drop any tweets yet, Fraser. Not yet. We okay. got people still buying. Get tell your people to buy first. Okay, we'll do that. But we'll that, is per that is perhaps the fattest cigar. Like, comical, dude. What is going on with this? Why are these guys the, the biggest, like, they're like cartoonish, dude. They're like, ha-ha, we're scamming you, you see? It's like, you're an adult, dude. You're literally scamming kids. Fine, get tell your people to buy first. Get okay. tell your people to buy first, you see? We'll do that, but we'll, we'll formulate them. But what we were thinking is a good way to kind of get started is if we could do some form of giveaway to give back to people who are- Would you look at that? Is that our boy Jordan Galen and fucking Fraser sitting together discussing a potential cryptocurrency deal in Mom's Basement Studio, a podcast that I was a part of with Keem and Bang. So yeah, like this all happened in literally the FaZe house, okay? Now, understandably, Banks told me that this uh, Fraser was living with him in that house. It's a big house house and this is a studio that is shared around i guess you could say it's like a soundproof area whatever that's full discrepancy i'm just mentioning it it's fucking insane that this guy all right fraser and his partner manager his talent guy his his manager jordan galen are sitting in mom's basement studio discussing a crypto deal for something called ape haven all right so how do i know ape haven was a deal right well ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna show you some good old fucking receipts for this now, this is one chat that I was sent from Jordan Galen, an individual known as Drew Roberts. Who is Drew Roberts? He was the actual person behind Apes Haven Token, Apes Token, this token deal that actually didn't. Yeah, run the bot. You ran the ban list. Run the ban list, C Mac. Do it. Nuke them. Go through. Nuke, nuke now, em. over here, Jordan Galen mentions a wallet address OX5AF8D67B22Bomber. Isn't that Fraser's alleged wallet? His wallet, huh? Jordan Galen, that says 562, 500,000 USD Tether, which is a stable coin. For those of you who don't know what a stable coin, let me show you that real quickly. Uh, a stable coin, so for instance, this is USDT, which is what they're mentioning. This is actually a coin that. Sticks. This is what's going to really fucking trigger crypto bros, but this is, isn't this ironically unstable? Like, this is supposed to be backed, like, this is supposed to be tied to the US dollar? 
basically close to US dollar. So if there's basically the idea of a stable coin is this coin is backed apparently by currency. Again, there's a lot of shady stuff behind this, but USD Tether in this case basically says that, hey, if it's going to keep itself on par with the US dollar. So if you get USD Tether in crypto, that should be backed and that should be as stable as actual US currency. Again, there's a lot of stuff behind this. It's a whole separate video topic of itself, but that's what a stable coin is. So it's safe. Yeah, here's a here's a really stable cryptocurrency you can use. It's called the US dollar, okay? It's backed by the United States government. Very similar to Tether, except actually backed by the United States government. Okay? And you can actually purchase goods and commodities with it, unlike Tether. Pretty cool, I know. Disruptive. Yeah, it's called Dollar Coin. Yeah. Safe to understand, ladies and gentlemen, when Jordan Galen here is talking about 562,000 USD Tether, okay, that's fucking half a million dollars, all right, plus 337,000 apes, including 150. Dude, Coin Bros really don't like you, lol. Dude, I know. I know. Um, uh, is this guy actually the fucking creator of Dogecoin? Because I want to show this thread afterwards. It's pretty, pretty illuminating. ...thousand to give away to fans, right? Again, we've seen the history of giveaways. I don't know how those giveaway... I don't know how legit that giveaway would actually be. Then, of course, they're talking about more of these pricing. Sorry, chat. We're killing all the bots right now that we're spamming weird shit. So here, I guess he's gotten some USD tether. So about like $20,000 worth of it, 22 or 22,000. And here you've got Drew giving his BTC address as well. This is gonna come into play. In fact, we'll actually look at this real quickly. Now, I don't want you to think that this is something that is bullshit. The video thing that I showed you, this is literally a discussion these guys had with Drew. I talked to Drew Roberts, and he basically denied that this deal was going to go through. The reason this deal didn't go through, according to my interview with Drew, was that, honestly, they just couldn't go on a handshake. You don't just give somebody half a million fucking dollars, okay? Without, you know, you don't just give anybody half a milli, all right, at all. All right, on a handshake. Okay, there's got to be some contracts. Uh, okay. I found that they were both upstanding. Uh, Sam Pepper, we first paid to do three tweets. Uh, he did two of them. Um, and then he didn't do the last one. And he sent me back a third of, or a third of the money we paid him to do that. Do you know um, how much you uh, paid him for just three tweets? It was 15 grand. So he sent me back five grand. Okay, so... Uh, oh, wow. He, so 15,000 yeah. or 1,500? I just... Canadian, yeah, 15, so yeah, fifteen thousand okay. dollars, U.S. dollars at the time. It was in Ethereum, so it's worth less now. Uh, this was this was in mid-May. Okay. Uh, and then and then we let's go. We murdered all the bots, boys. I'm a crypto bro, but I like you because your points on regulation and how scam coins fuck over crypto bros are accurate plus necessary. Thank you. This exact example is bad because the USDT is kind of a scam itself. And on investigation now, traders are moving to USDC. Crypto traders don't use the US dollar for a lot of reasons. We agreed to a deal with, with Fraser uh, to do a promotion for the, the token, the APAVEN token. And with that one, uh, we were mainly working with a couple other people on this team and kind of went through Sam Pepper. Uh, but then Frazier was getting involved, which, you know, I guess you've seen in the video. Mm -hmm. um, but he was mainly just kind of executing he, what he was doing. And we had, we agreed to a deal with for around 500 grand, half a million uh, for him and wow, a number okay. of his. And that, uh, that his, half a million is just Fraser? No, it was a number of connections. So okay. No shot. Yo, just fucking do crypto gambling, bro. Unironically, steak is paying better, dude. So these guys pair up deals similar to what we know of what Aiden Ross was doing with all the face clan boys and like rice gum and shit, where they like literally get like big $2 million deals from steak or whatever fucking gambling site is. And it's like multiple people are getting paid out of it. But it's crazy that like, uh, it's crazy that they would just like do this.
do the other thing. I mean, they are doing the other thing. Why am I saying just do the other thing? But like, just do the other thing and then, you know, stay doing the other thing, I guess. Even that's really fucking bad. I don't know, man. Frazier and his manager were said. Who are you dating? Your mom, dude. What a question. Now you're on timeout. Okay, you're grounded, mister. Bring it up. Um, and then we paid him 20 grand up front as a test run. And then we ended up not paying for the whole thing. And I don't want the 20 grand back. It was a, uh, you know, it was kind of like a consulting fee. He did it and it was coming off the total. I asked Drew if Fraser, for instance, could have asked to help develop or hire programmers for any other token here. So right. for Fraser, is he, was he involved more? Do you, like, do, can you, can you tell, like, was he looking for things like developers or anybody that was going to handle any backend operation? No, uh, somebody else on the phase team had asked me to do some tokens for them. Um, and he asked to remain anonymous when I told him I was going to do an interview about this. Um, oh, okay. So somebody there, else. Yeah, so somebody else was. But Fraser is the one that has a lot of these great connections. He has built up goodwill for a long period of time with other influencers in the space. So it's a bit weird to hear about this anonymous person of the organization. I mean, Why won't they just admit who it is, dude? I mean, that is a very, very weird flag to raise. And it's definitely something I want to follow up on. But moving forward, I asked Drew Roberts about these people and if the, if the FaZe organization itself was involved or whether this was a rogue element within FaZe taking deals on their own. Back to the initial point, it just seems that the FaZe manager that or the FaZe contact that you had at this moment, right? Did they then yeah. set up this deal basically with half a million on the table? Like, well, I yeah. looked at yeah. the, yeah. So half yeah. a million on the table. So the FaZe Clan guys were order ordering this with you. So they It's Banks probably. I mean, they traced Banks as like a potential rug pull. And it seemed like he actually stayed in whatever the fucking social coin thing that he was doing. The scam he was doing. And also he's not involved in this. I'm not saying he hasn't done a bunch of shady shit. But he was a bit of the bag holder in the previous, uh, in, in, in his previous iteration of doing exactly what they were doing with like the sweepstakes and shit. He totally just got involved in that one because it had his name in it. They, they were running a, Half a million. Yeah, they were, and they made it very clear. So is that TSM crypto shit a scam too? No, there are more legitimate avenues. I mean, that's a crypto marketplace, right? So it's there is still a product, okay? Like the crypto marketplace that TSM is involved in, there's still a product in the end, right? Like that's FTX. That is like an actual legitimate crypto marketplace. Defending NFTs now? No, that's not an NFT. What the fuck are you talking about? You think FTX is an NFT? What are you... What? Okay, guys. I don't think you understand. FTX is... Is not just... Is not a cryptocurrency. FTX is a marketplace where you can trade cryptocurrency. So, while you may have... While you may feel some type of way about cryptocurrencies, which is understandable, I am as well. Uh, I am very, uh, very bearish on crypto in general. That is just, uh, th there's a service there. They're operating, they're buying and selling the scams. Okay, it's like, yeah, it's like Robin Hood for crypto. They're doing outside of phase their the esports team they're doing outside as all individual influencers uh on a personal level which i think is where the main beef comes in with because phase as a team has been offered amazing deals from the likes of coinbase and others to mm -hmm. do their own token do their own coin even uh and they have a bunch of nft deals in the works that they man this guy seems uh awfully quiet in this video very different energy that he's putting out here I don't see the cigar. I'm a little surprised that he just seems very uh, reserved when he's talking to our boy Mutahar right here. Uh, kind of interesting. They had somebody else on their team had asked me to take a look at. Um, and they, 
they're not going to risk any of that for a shit coin. Um, so so someone within phase, so someone within phase comes to you, organizes a deal, but wants it to be independent of them. I mean, it's almost impossible to do that on a handshake deal, right? Like, it's very difficult. Yeah. And that's why I didn't get mine done. We paid 20 grand and we have not, my team of pre sellers didn't trust me enough to get the rest of it put in. Uh, and so that was, that, that's the challenge with it. It's like, if you're not, you don't have a regular contract like in the real world, it's tough to get the deliverables that you want on the time schedule that you want to buy. So it's safe to say that this. I don't know, man. If someone is like, making their money off of like scamming kids and scamming everyone and scamming their fans like i probably wouldn't trust them with a handshake deal i'm just saying unless i was in on it and trusted him because i've done this multiple times with you know in multiple different uh, iterations this fraser like fraser and whoever his contact is within face clan I really want to understand the Zoomer logic that someone tries to sell them something they don't understand called shitcoin and these idiot crypto bros say, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, they literally call it shitcoin. Like, they're not even hiding it. The people that are fucking selling you this to milk you for the little baby dollars that your parents gave you, okay, and allowance money, they already call it shitcoin. You know that it's called shitcoin. You literally call it a shitcoin yourself. And you still do it. Uh, have done way more than just save the kids. This is like sort of a repeat pattern, right? At least for their end. Like they've just been... Yeah, I think know. Sam Pepper's the one who's who's developed this trend and makes a lot of money. And when you have one influencer making a lot of money executing something, you know, essentially an advertising deal. Mm -hmm. When you have them making a lot of money doing an advertising deal, other influencers want to be involved uh, and they're looking for ways. Now, when they get involved. I don't know, man. Me, I see this and I think to myself, this is definitely something to stay away from. If I see Sam Pepper involved in something with the limited knowledge I have of what he's done and on background, like what I've seen uh, or what I've heard he of him doing, I'm like, I'm going to stay the fuck away from that. That seems like the smart thing to do. Okay. And, and not the uh, other way around. Oh, they may not realize the repercussions of making money this way it's not like a traditional advertising deal there are it's a marketing but it's more like an affiliate marketing program a multi-level marketing program where there are you know and people in the real world we backlash against what it looks like an injustice yeah. to the fans and for fair for the record like you know how people are saying this is just like gambling this is just like gambling this is just like gambling it's not dude it's literally not like gambling. The odds are significantly better in your favor in gambling than this. This is like if the casino was like, hey, come here. We're going to take your fucking money no matter what. And we're not, you're not going to get any money. It's called the Grift Casino. Okay. We rigged all of the fucking slots. We rigged every single, we rigged Every single slot, at least with a casino, there is a mathematical equation, okay? You know what the odds are. Obviously, there's different circumstances involved that change the odds drastically, okay? Level of intoxication, other people on the table, if you're playing blackjack, they're not playing by the book, you know, all this other stuff. But ultimately, there is a fucking odd that you know mathematically. Now, and of course, the casinos are still rigged in the favor of the house right but having said that this is basically like if the casino was saying this is called the griff casino and we rigged all of the slots to favor us okay but maybe you can fuck other people by bringing them into the casino and we'll give you a fucking five dollar coupon that you can use back in the casino and everyone's like oh dude fuck yeah dude i mean i'm definitely gonna do that that's so sick that's uh, so smart for me. I'm going to fucking literally go to the casino, uh, the, the Griff Casino, where I give you all the money and get nothing in return. They're like, they're literally like, no, you're going to get nothing in return. You're going to get nothing in return, but maybe you can fuck over the next guy. And people are like, yeah, seems good. Uh, yeah, I, uh, where, where do I sign up? Can I give you more of my money?
Their reporting, I just want to say Drew Roberts did confirm that whenever he worked with these guys, all right, he had a he had a positive vibe with it. Okay, this what this the, there wasn't any ill will from his part towards any of these individuals, and I want to include that just for the sake of clarity. I had a good dealings with Sam Pepper and and Frazier. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the self report, dude. That's a red flag, brother. Sorry. And through them, met a few other people on the phase team. Uh, I have some recordings. I, I record all my Zoom calls, so uh, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. look like you're, you're recording this one. But if you want to, you're welcome to. Oh yeah, no, I've uh, I've hit the I've hit the record on it. Just uh, that's why I was telling you in the beginning. I just wanted to. <laughs> So here you can kind of see some idea, at least from Fraser, when they were discussing the apes token that didn't go through. You can actually see that he received 4.8 million apes, all right, so ape token right over here. And then promptly within that deal, uh, he actually did send that money back. So you can see that after the, I guess when the deal didn't go through, Fraser's account then gave it back to OX7C87D, which if you look to the actual threat chain matches the wallet address that Drew Roberts has mentioned in this text thread. Now I'm gonna leave this where it's at. This is a deal that did not go through, okay? But as you can imagine, looking at the amount, the USD tether, half a million on the line, that's the kind of money I think that I'm starting to expect with a lot of these deals. When I first analyzed the actual value of each pump and dump treated separately on its own and the transactions based on the blockchain, it didn't seem like a whole lot of money to me but when half a million dollars is starting to get tossed around and that's just on one deal even if it's spread across creators that is a pretty decent chunk of money now I want to shift my attention towards Aiden Ross which is a deal that oh. actually did happen and we're gonna use the blockchain to break it down piece oh, by piece shit. now for full yo he's coming for our boy dude that's a W streamer Mutahar you better watch out. That's a fucking W streamer, dude. Chill. All right. Full context over here. Aiden Ross actually was partaking in a deal regarding MILF token. Okay. Now on May 26, 2021, according to this tweet by MILF token, they said, go tune in to Aiden Ross's Twitch for a surprise. Twitch TV, Aiden Ross retweet May 26, 2021 at 10 PM. Okay. That's when the post was going on. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go watch this entire thing play by play. And we're going to use the blockchain to figure out just how much this deal was actually worth and how it all transpired. So let's watch this. This is from an actual VOD with Aiden Ross about to buy a MILF token. I'm going to cut through a bit of this stuff, but let's get into it, okay? So we know Jordan Galen. We know that he's did with Fraser. Let's go on further, okay? Uh, I got two more things to say about MILF. I actually went MILF in the chat if you guys want to buy. Uh, right now, I'm going to buy some of MILF on stream right now. And again, we are. Uh, I'm going to be giving out 20000 of this shit later. Remember, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't... I'm, this is, I'm literally getting paid, bro. I'm getting paid for this shit. I'm being honest with you guys, so. <laughs> wait. Wait, I didn't know he literally was... Bro, okay, okay. How can you hate this fucking dude, dude? He's literally fucking admitting it, dude. What the fuck? Bro, if you literally turned around and bought MILF token, you deserve it, okay? If you turned around and bought MILF token after he said, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm getting paid for this shit, and you were like, oh, dude, fuck yeah, let's do the MILF token, that seems good to me, you deserve to get fucked. He actually fucking admitted it, dude, what the fuck, yo, I'm scamming you guys, okay? All right, let's see how that flies up in court. He's not a financial advisor. He did get. He did mention later that he got paid a fat bag for this one, and he hopes that you didn't buy this token, by the way. Chat, by the way, that MILF token shit I did a while back, I already told you guys, don't buy that shit. I got paid a bag to do that shit. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. I hope none of you guys actually bought it. <laughs> oh my god, dude. You always defend the people you like when they act shitty. I mean, I've fucking criticized Aiden Ross like a gajillion times, so I don't know why you're saying that, like, I'm defending him because I like him. Both of these things are weird and untrue. Why does Aiden Ross live in a hospital? I don't know. I'm saying that in comparison to... I'm saying that in comparison to... uh. All of these other people that we've seen thus far, like his, his, 
admission that he's just like getting paid. Approaching your bias. Yeah, I know. Um, his admission that he's like getting paid for it is just, you know. What is this? Literally a meme now, dude. Oh my God. You're right. Who is the imposter? The, the sussiest of Bacchus, dude. Frazier K. I'm gonna now, interestingly enough, here, we're going to look at this address, okay? So here he's got account one on MetaMask, and he says OX1B71. Now, I'm going to show you right here. On the right, this is, a, this is the actual transaction going on, okay? So May 27th, all right? Just shortly after this entire ordeal went through, okay? So this is May 27th. This is, like, literally the day after, okay? So, like, two, two, this, is, this, is, this is the actual account, OX1B71. I want everybody to know that. So you can see right here, he has 1,000 USDC, okay? Now, if you look into this account real quick, all right, we're actually going to go look at his ERCC token. So on OX1B71, we're actually going to go see what his tokens are, okay? So, so according over here, from OX02225944, the Alette Jordan Galen wallet, okay? This is sending 1,000 USDC. So that 1,000 USDC isn't far to believe that he actually got this account. All right, this token straight from this alleged Jordan Galen account. So let's go further. Now, here's where a new Pokemon gets introduced to the party. Listen to this voice real quick. Buy on Uniswap. Uh huh. No, no, click buy on Uniswap on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Click. Yeah. Yeah, select now USDC. Select the token. Click USDC. Man, that almost sounds like it's Jordan Galen. I mean, you'd have to really listen to the voices from that mom's basement clip in this one. But uh, I'm just going to say, listen, all right, I'm not a, I'm not an auditory expert, but that sounds pretty close to me, dude. And I think I have pretty good hearing. I'm just thinking. Yeah, select now USDC. Select the token. Click USDC. Uh, we'll do that, but we'll, we'll formulate them. But what we were thinking is a good way to kind of get started is if we could do some form of giveaway to give back to people who are... Yeah, run that, run that, run that. It doesn't let me. Hold on, I'm sending you Ethereum right now. Wait 30 seconds. Okay. He's sending him Ethereum? Wait 30 seconds? All right, sure, we'll wait 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, wait, did you get it? Wait, what transaction? <gasps> oh, wait a minute. Ah! I gotta let him scream in my ear first. So he ended up getting about... <laughs> What is he doing, dude? Just, just fucking leaked. Bro, literally just watch Aiden Ross's streams to fucking investigate. I mean, to uncover everything, okay? He just leaks everything all the fucking time, dude. Non-stop. How, dude? How are you gonna... This is not even 4K. This is 18K, 16K. I don't know how many Ks we're at at this point, dude. This is phase K. Caught in phase K. God damn, dude. 0 0.1826 ETH, okay? So is that going to show up on the blockchain? You bet your asshole. You bet your ass it shows up on the blockchain. Pro tip, look at that transaction ID and you can cross... It's like literally everything, dude. He just... He just straight up gave everything away. Now, going off of that, you can find whatever this dude Jordan's uh, uh, crypto wallet too. It's reference for yourself. Oh, look at that. 0 0.18. Who sent that? Jordan Galen. We just had to wait 30 seconds. The alleged Jordan Galen wallet sent him 0 0.18 Ethereum, okay? So literally right there, 0527, bam, right there we got sent that money, okay, to this account. I work as an investigative reporter and I'm impressed with his creator he has skills no they're very good they're actually very good and and diligent right but also at the same time they kind of don't need to be because these guys keep admitting and and leaking shit like over and over again do you see what i'm saying like yeah they are very good these uh, both kavizilla and mutahar is very good but also at the same time like aiden and everyone else involved are very bad hiding their tracks like
they're really not trying at all. It's like robbing a bank with no mask and no gun and failing to rob. Or just admitting that you have like a toy gun while you're in the middle of the robbery and then getting fucking owned by the time you get outside. Like cops just fucking, you know, drop you. Now, what did you do after? Well, let's look at what the blockchain says. So literally one thing to note is that's 24147, right? So immediately right after, right after this 241-247, he should be buying that MILF token at 245, okay? So let's see. Let's go forward a little bit, a few minutes. All right, All right so let's much, see. How much, to how much token is that? MILF, 11050000. Wow, that's the same amount we see. Blockchain ain't lying. Now, of course, that proves that transaction got done. So right there, we use the blockchain to basically time that stream bot down to a fucking T. But let's see the amount of money that... Chat, this is why you need regulation, okay? But it, that's just a crypto is traceable, so anything they do is shady and is immediately exposed by those who don't know how to track wallets. It doesn't matter. It's like saying building codes are unnecessary because ultimately the building falls and it kills people. And then other people will know, like, this is the contractor that built the building. Well, okay, well, it's too late at that point. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. People fucking died. Just like in this situation, people bought MILF coin. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it literally does not matter. That's why you need to at least stop other fucking clown asses and donkeys on the internet. These fucking dumbass crypto bros who think that they're going to do a get-rich-quick scheme because they're naive as fuck from doing this naive dumb shit. That actually got fucking sent. So in this case, we're going to go to Jordan Galen's alleged wallet. 0x02259442, right? So in the actual Ethereum chain for that wallet, let's see what happened on the 27th, okay? Let's see what transactions they were making. So right over here, you can see that the one transaction to OX1B71, which let's go back just a little bit. Yeah, OX1B, they sent that money to them, right? So 0527, let's see the token transactions that happened on 0527. So on 0520 fucking seven, they get this address, right? So OX63DD sends 1,000 USD coin. They also send 186,000 USD coin. So let's see what USD coin point is it's another stable fucking currency okay this currency <laughs> let me look at the price it's one Bro, i love i'm sorry it's the funniest shit to me if you're literally buying cryptocurrency that's supposedly backed by the u.s dollar anyways dollar going. okay in Just fact say you want to fucking evade taxes dude okay that's like what purpose is there out there you can do that, US... what's the point you can't buy shit with it. SDC. I love that his thing is uninstall McAfee. To USD and get a price ticker right now. USD coin on Coindesk right now is priced to one fucking dollar. All right. It is a stable coin. It's how it's built. So they ended up getting about $186,000 worth of this fucking coin. All right. You can literally see on the day of transaction that was $186,524,000. So just a little bit over. But what else did the same account, OX63, that sent them all this money also send? Go one above 145 million MILF token, okay? All right, that's how much got fucking sent over. That's how much money, that's the fucking bag that was paid. Do you get that, audience? That's the fucking bag we're talking about. About almost, almost two hundred thousand dollars that's how much it costs to take your fans to, to, to bring your fans along for the milf token ride and get them losing their fucking cash and again i'd honestly love to hear a refutation i'd love to that's it dude i mean that's a lot of money but like for these guys For these guys, dude, that's it. Fuck you. Are you dumb, dude? Are you dumb? Are you unaware of like how much money these motherfuckers can make, dude? Again, let me repeat myself. Steak is out here paying like $2 million to do Gamba streams and shit.
People get so mad. They're like, eh, dude, you fucking so rich. Shut the fuck up. It's like, motherfucker. Part of the protection that you have from shit like this, from a person like myself, aside from my own personal morality, is that fucking number up there. I don't need to do any of this shit because of you, okay? Because you give me the freedom and financial support and financial comfort to be able to fucking not do anything shady. And even then, I wouldn't do it regardless. I wasn't doing it when I didn't have fucking subscribers anyway. But the, the way I fucking maintain my independence from all this other shit is that, okay? You can fucking pay, pay all you want. You can cap me all you want. It's the, the proof is in the fucking pudding. Like, it's not like I'm doing shady shit. And God knows motherfuckers want to expose me for doing shady shit regardless. Am I wrong? That number in the corner is also the number of people that get to avoid the ad breaks at the top of the fucking hour, baby. Because at the top of the hour, every hour, there's a 60 second ad break. Yeah. And if you like to have an ad free broadcasting experience where you're just not watching ads at the top of the hour, then. You can subscribe either for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Or you can use an ad block or a VPN. But that number is the number of people who don't watch ads. Here's the ad break now. Whew. Yeah, we're going to do Britney's conservatorship in a little bit. Matt Gates is there, which is fucking disgusting. Leave Britney alone, Matt Gates. We're going to do that after this. To hear that, no, 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 this money wasn't for MILF token. Bro, when the same wallet is giving you nearly 200,000 US dollars and then the MILF token, I mean, what conclusion do you want me to come to? Now, at the same time, I don't think anything here is illegal. Uh, maybe it's like an FTC violation. I, I, If anything, I actually don't see any real deal of pumping and dumping. The guy literally advertised the coin, and if he followed every rule right, then sure, whatever. He got paid a fat bag. Bag. An unethical fat bag, but a fat bag no less, all right? And if it is legal, all right, then it is legal. But I have my doubts based on how... I like how you say you're glad none of your ears will ever have power and then ignore that I'm literally in charge of housing policy for Western Utah. Okay, motherfucker, let me pull up your logs. Okay, you haven't said anything dumb as fuck, though, so... There you go. I'm fine. I'm fine with you having power, okay? When I was 14, I was with this girl I liked, and we were at her parents' house. I asked her if she wanted to kiss. She looked at the hallway and thought I heard her say, I think I'm good. And so I just hugged her and left. And later she told me that she had said, I think we're good, as in her parents weren't coming down the hallway. So just remember this whenever you feel bad about, was your quarantine eventful? That's embarrassing. They're taking your job away from the maximum cringe that you... Just admit it to in my chat. LMFAO, my logs. Why would you admit that? You're like, you just basically gave me your crypto wallet. You know what I mean? You basically gave me your crypto wallet. So now I can watch every single dumb thing that you've said and done. Dude, I'm not going to check my fucking DMs. I don't care if you made MILF token. I don't believe that you made MILF token, but I, I don't care. Bro, I made MILF token, bro. Come on, bro. How they advertise this. Then again, those are my doubts. I'd love refutations. That's what I'm here for. Fair and balanced reporting. Now, we're going to look at FaZe Banks real quick, okay? Now, FaZe Banks is one of oh, the no. highest level guys. Don't do it, Mudahar! Don't do it! Don't do it. Oh, God. No, not FaZe Banks. Not Brother Banks. Not Father Banks. Don't fucking do it. Oh, no. This part of the... This part will hurt.
This part's gonna hurt me over at face clan okay and he's been under the ire for his connection to bank social people are looking at him as a potential guy that is promoting these cryptocurrencies now i'm going to give this a fair objective look i've been talking to phase banks over the course of the week and some of the calls have gotten heated some of them are now full connection i am friendly with the guy he is a friend dude getting phase banks heated you must have done something wrong mudahar okay i'm just saying he never fucking he's always phased up dude he never phases down okay He's literally phased the fuck up nonstop. Do you understand? He's never phased down. I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe that he's done involved in any wrongdoing. Okay. No, it wasn't a random dude at the bar. I think it was a security at the bar. Friend of mine. The fight. But that's not going to be a case for me. If he's guilty, he's guilty. Okay. Now we're going to look at all of this as a team here. Okay. Why the fuck are you defending them? Because I fucking phased, dude. Did you, did you suck your dick or what? Why are you going out like that for banks? I love that, like, there something does happen in this community. The longer you're a subscriber, the less you understand, like, irony, sarcasm, or pure fascination with a character. Like, it literally feels like... It actually feels as though... Like, the more leftist you become on this journey, the more you just, like, lose a part of your brain that allows you to analyze things with, uh, with humor. Okay. Dude, I'll fucking... What the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? God damn it, I've been subscribed to you for 13 fucking months. Fuck. Actually reflecting... So that wallet, 0x022, right? That 0x022-5944, that alleged Jordan Galen wallet in this case. All right, one thing, I just got to have my notes on the side here real quick. Give me a second. Yeah, with the uh, FAD1 ending, AFAAD1 ending, all right? This is the alleged Jordan Galen wallet. It keeps showing up between Fraser, between Aiden Ross, and now FaZe Banks here, okay? Now, FaZe Banks was part of this bank social deal that didn't exactly go through. Now, at this point, I'm not going to speak for what I don't exactly know and what I haven't heard myself. CoffeeZilla actually had an interview with Bank Social, and that CEO told Coffee one thing, while Banks told him another thing. So there were a multitude of, like, there, there was a couple discrepancies in the interviews between these two individuals. But from what I heard, the actual uh, CEO of Bank Social is one of those guys that definitely wanted to promote his own coin, no matter what, and there was... A, the deal was just bad all around, okay? It didn't exactly pan through. Both sides really have nothing negative to say to one another. What I'm actually interested in is how the bank social transaction got done. What Banks told me was that he was paid 69 Ether, a sort of a consulting fee, for being part of this project, something that they were going to go on with long term. Of course, this is a bit up in the air. I'm just interested in seeing how Banks received the money for this deal, the 69 Ethereum that he was given. So let's check that transaction out. Now, looking at this transaction, OX022, you can actually see it's sending banks, phasebanks.eth, his phasebanks' his actual Ether account, 69 Ether. So things are checking out so far. But let's go to nice. Jordan's wallet and check what happened on his account, 0528. The motherfucking so sex number, baby. On this Jordan alleged wallet real quick, that's somehow involved with all these members. Again, I'm just saying it for legal reasons. Huh, look at that! It seems like Jordan actually received this alleged wallet from OX0E99. Who's OX0E99? Uh, this seems to actually be all the people related to just bank social. You can probably see by their ERC-2020. Yeah, it's literally all just bank social transactions. So, he got paid 82 Ether. 82 Ether, right? He got paid that much money. That's about 100, that's almost 200,000 fucking dollars in this case, okay? A lot of fucking money. He gives banks 69 of that Ether that he just received in this moment, literally within an hour, okay? So, banks ended up getting, what, like 167,000? So Banks actually told us that he didn't even know that this finder's fee type, this looks like a finder fee to the average person, right? Jordan took a little fee out of whatever he gave Banks, right? So Banks got 69 Ether, but Jordan kept 82, right? 
So Jordan keeps a, a modest sum of 13 Ether. The alleged Jordan wallet keeps 13 no. Ether. Banks confirmed to me this wasn't in his knowledge. He didn't know anything about this, all right? He had no fucking clue. No. Look, he's operating off on his own. Because look, I'm looking at this, right? And when I see Jordan Galen taking a cut, I see a classic manager sponsor deal, right? Yeah. Like yeah, I, that's before, fair. before I thought it was, oh, Kay's working on his own deal. But hang on, hang on, hang on. I do want to say this. I do want to say this. No. No. Yeah. In that sense, it would probably be in reverse because that's typically how things go. The talent gets paid first and then out of that, some um, whatever was agreed on it gets split up from then. That's how it usually works. That's not how it worked in this case. I didn't get the fucking whatever number you, you said, the 80. You tell him. You tell him, Brother Banks. You tell him, dude. You tell him. You fucking own him, dude. ETH and and chipped off whatever else you know what I'm saying that's not it's, how that, that right. happened no no no, no. I, it I, was I, in the I reverse it's still but but nonetheless the fact no, that management's hey, hey, that's, getting but, a cut still looks bad but that's and, but that's a fair but that's a fair point though of course that of is course, that course. is a fair that's point it's like of course now at this point we have to look further into Banks's wallet now this is a discrepancy that Banks didn't know about when we confronted him okay so let's go back to Banks's wallet OX7D now if you use MetaMask which Banks confirms that he uses MetaMask if you create a MetaMask account you will immediately also get the exact same address on the BSC scan network so you see how we're on ether scan right if you go to BSC and you take any ether address and you can just slap that right in there you can see that 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 ether address shows up now banks made no transactions on this bsc scan account that was made alongside the metamask right but if you go to the bep 20 tokens banks has five fucking trillion of the moon portal token now banks has done nothing with the moon portal token okay if you look at this moon portal token as it is right now it's just sitting there on an account doing nothing what? Okay, Banks literally has not touched this, and when confronted about it, Banks actually had no fucking idea. He sent us a text message that he shared with Jordan on the day of when confronted by me and Coffee. Okay, so I'm going to show you that text real quick. So on June 26, this is Banks texting good old Jordan over here. Yo, wh whoever Moon Portal is and whatever that is, can you tell him to stop advertising that I work for or with them? I don't even know what that is. And you and I've never worked with them, and they're fucking telling people that we work together. Not sure who... Not sure who Moon Portal is, but let me look into it and tell him to stop... Whoa, who's there? There's a second guy in the video now. What the fuck? Is that, is that, the, is that Jordan? Is that the second guy? But right away, brother. Seriously, Jordan. On it. Please send me a screenshot of what you're talking about. Send it to me, brother, so I can kill it. I know a lot of people involved in the space and can get connected. Getting on a flight very soon. Yes. Dude, this is... Uh... This is just, I mean... Is this before or after they had this combo? Like... I mean, it's after, right? Uh, I already ran uh, the ad, Chatters, chill. So this actually kind of vindicates Banks a little bit. He has no fucking idea. And then Jordan, the guy he's texting. And remember, this was done on a call with me, Coffee, and Banks. So I, again, I, he doesn't really have the time to Photoshop any of this. He took a screenshot of his phone in front of us, sent it to us on a call. And this is this this is what it is. So he talks to this Jordan, Jordan Gal G J G Jordan Galen, who's, uh, you know, he's like, what the fuck is going on? Not sure who Moon Portal is. Not sure who Moon Portal is. Well... There's an easy way to figure out bullshit in the There's no shot that that dude does not know who Moon or what Moon Portal is. The blockchain, okay? Because it's all truthful up in this bitch. Now, this is the bank's address again. So let's go down and look who sent him the 5 trillion Moon Portal. This O zero ox 0 d 67 So if you open that wallet address I'm not going to watch that meme, up, RTBA. Right, we, already, we already fucking memed it. We already here, memed it. I you're already actually posted. going to go to the token of Moon Portal, right? 
Now, if you click on this address, okay, it takes you to OX0D67. Now, from what I'm understanding in this address, okay, it's literally just a moon portal address, all right? So it's, all its BEP20 tokens are just fucking moon portal. In fact, if you look at all of its transaction history, the last one that ever gets into it, well, it's, it's literally just a contract situation, okay? It's just the moon portal. It's the moon portal wallet. Now, let's go to the Moon Portal token itself and put in a couple searches. So I put in Galen's, all right, Jordan Galen's alleged wallet right here, and it took me to, hey, look at that. Is that the same account that sent to- Wait, what the fuck? It kind of feels like- Banks, two point- Wait, no way. So uh, I guess Jordan did know about Moon Portal and also uh, tr at least like, n at least, uh, you know, transferred funds between an account that happened to give FaZe Banks a uh, Moon Portal. And also, uh, uh, Jordan, that's crazy. 0.5 trillion token. Well, let's see. 0x0d6769. Let's see. Let's see where, uh, Banks got his wallet from, okay? The only thing that he was sent. Oh, look at that. 0x0d6769. So the same account sent to that Jordan Galen. Now let's do a little bit extra. Let's plug crazy. in maybe Fraser's wallet, okay? So let's get rid of the search. Let's put in Fraser. So 0x5af8. Uh, D67 B22 bomber. Holy shit. OX0 D6769 sent him the exact same amount that Banks was sent. So you know what? Banks. What the fuck is this character you're playing? It's the character where I just ban you because you think you're making a snide remark because I'm trying to make it as easily understandable as possible for the people in the chat who are a little bit confused because Mutahar, while, done a, while he did a brilliant investigation, keeps talking about a bunch of sequences and numbers. So you didn't actually come across as like smarter than the average individual. You came across like a clown ass who just got banned for no fucking reason. Gray name. Banks didn't do anything with his wallet, but you know what Fraser did with his wallet? He fucking dumped that bitch out into the market and he now owns no portals, dude. The guy is locked and it's end game for that. Whereas Banks, and at least he gets this, he gets this vindication because A, he really didn't know what the fuck was going on. And if he was going to participate in a pump and dump, he would have actually dumped the token. All right. This token, he's still holding on to it. He literally told me I'll throw it into a burn. Okay. I'll burn the fucking amount, but it's still sitting on there. So you know what? I have to imagine if he was part of a pump and dump, he's the only one that didn't fucking participate in it. Vindicated! I'll Fucking safe, dude. I told you. I fucking told you, dude. Let's go. At least on Moon Portal. Brother Banks. I'll give a five. I'll give a five hundred dollars to one random person in twenty-four hours who likes this tweet. Add milf token. Good luck. Not financial advice. So here it's on the twenty-third of May, right? Okay. So guess what? You want to see who won on the twenty-third of May? Well, let's go to the fucking blockchain. Twenty-third of May, right here. Yeah, who's that? Zero X zero two two five nine four four two eighty eight. Holy fucking shit, dude! They don't care. The daddy won. The fucking manager was the only one that won it. Ninety million. <laughs> Holy shit! It does. That's so insane, dude. That's so insane. At least put like one degree of separation, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? literally place like one degree of separation or two isn't there like a way to mix uh isn't there a way to like automate this you like pump it in you just put it into a fucking crypto wallet that like mixes it up into multiple different avenues makes it harder to fucking trace it's called a tumbler yeah like did they why are they not using that dude Like, do you not, have you never seen, like, a crime movie, dude? You have to launder the money. You have to launder it. Just because there's no federal authorities involved doesn't mean you can't, like, launder the fucking money a little bit, dude. You lose overhead through a tumbler, probably greed. Dude, that's nuts, dude. It is the most worthwhile expense in that situation.
doesn't get easier. As a random person? My God, it's like these two guys, their only random winner is the fucking manager they have. Holy shit, it doesn't get better. Now, something really cool in all of this is Face Clan has actually come out. Banks, and from what I'm talking to, they're open to the idea of having me and Coffee go there and audit them. Banks especially is okay with us checking his phones and uh, tell uh, and like all of his laptops. I mean, he doesn't want us to look into it. He, he, he's actually completely okay with the idea of getting a third-party organization, us, and a group of investigators to look into it. And honestly, I might possibly do it. I'm down to do it with coffee. I'll fly down to LA and I'll bring some of my friends from my old day and we'll look, we'll look at it as a team. Okay. We will give it the full forensic fuck down, but I definitely don't want. Okay. 0% chance that like their main manager, Jordan, doesn't get absolutely perma-fucked in that, in that full-blown audit. Like, why? I mean, he'd be down, but, like, that dude, Jordan, no shot. Dude, are you kidding me? want to bring myself into this i'd rather have actual authorities federal agents looking into this and putting it down for legal record as also to put the right people behind prison and also to really give a proper investigation into face clan to really isolate them from what i believe to be really terrible fucking actors at the end of the day Frazier, a lot of these people that have been suspended, with the exception of Tico, in my opinion, who's like the most like clean boy out of all of this, uh, have absolutely tarnished FaZe's name in the brand around the world everywhere. Okay, in the eyes of the public. Not really, because like they they get fucked like this all the time. They can't get out of like shitty situations like this. And it doesn't even matter. It's like they it doesn't ultimately matter. Like their fans are into it i think like they just don't really care they they literally were on the cover of sports illustrated like not that long ago so obviously like it, yeah they just forget public phase looks scummy right now and i mean there's just no way to really go about that these guys really fucked up their image okay but at the end of the day i like to go for the truth and if that means auditing phase as a third video for this when i already have doesn't this fuck the investigation youtubers meddling in the affairs of the law not necessarily because they're not fucking portraying themselves as like underage girls and boys or some shit like the pedo hunters do and all they've done is trace publicly traceable uh, crypto wallet transactions. So no, as a matter of fact, this is a, this is the exact same kind of investigation an investigator would uh, also conduct. But not only that, but it's not like the other side can hide their assets. Well, they can hide their assets, but they can't hide the, the transactions that already took place. That unfortunately is permanent on the blockchain. As far as I know, it's over. Every transaction is literally just logged in perpetuity. Yeah, I uh, apparently these uh these cryptos were too far for the Nelk boys to engage in, which I find really interesting. Any influencer you you see promoting any coin or crypto is very simple goal. Get their fans to invest money because they receive a free coin or they bought for very low. When you all trust them and invest, they sell and make tons of money off you. It's fucking disgusting and don't fall for it. Everyone's been promoting this scam bullshit. I promise you, nobody has been offered to do this more than us. So I know for a fact this is how it works. These influencers are hungry for money because they have no real fan base. It's wild to me. Absolutely. Oh, what's up, mom? It's absolutely wild to me that this was too far for the Nelk boys, dude. They did not want to send it, I guess. They did not want to send it after all. Am I right? Yeah, that was a good joke. You know, that was a good have joke. to deal with the interviews of all these individuals who are now coming to talk is going to be another monumental task bigger than the one you have already watched. But ladies and gentlemen, that's where we're going to go. Now, at the end of the day, I want to understand more. I think the story is a lot deeper than what I've even looked into, but that's pretty much what we're getting down to. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is almost a passion project as much as it is a search for the truth. Uh, if you want to say that any YouTuber criticizing you lied when they looked at the fucking blockchain and looked at each transaction, 
you're full of fucking shit, okay? That's all I'm gonna say on a personal level. It burns me watching that fucking ap apology video uh, that basically said, don't believe the YouTubers. They don't have any... No, no, no. We looked at the facts, okay? And the facts don't fucking lie. Ladies and gentlemen, that being said, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This was an investigation. Part two into Save the Kids. The most deepest scam rabbit hole that I've ever fucking seen. That said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out. <laughs>